What's up good buddy in the shop today we have an 8 horsepower Little Wonder leaf blower picked this bad boy up for a song back in the spring. I don't think I paid more than 20 bucks for her. She don't run, but she's not seized. So I'm very confident we're going to get her running. It's probably just a case of neglected fuel. And that's really all we know about her. Uh, I know it's not seized and I know it's a little wonder and that's all we got. Uh, let's see any fuel in the tank. Oh, there is still fuel in the tank. How's she smell? Uh, I should smell that old. We got Earl in her. Come on. Uh, oh wow, we've got new oil in it. Well now that's just interesting. Um, I purchased this from a dentist who had kept it under the porch of his practice. He had like a deck off his practice. <clears throat> and uh, he said, you know, he'd use it twice a year, once a year, twice a year, and then it would sit. And then he went to use it one day and she no worky. So let's see, that's not seized, so that's nice. It looks like it was, um, you know, kept under a porch and not protected from the elements, but everything's there. It looks it looks to be complete. I actually have this same Motorb sitting over here. So if we end up needing any, this one's off a log splitter. <clears throat> if we need any um, parts, literally got a, a donor right there. This one's got an on off switch. Does this one have that same on off switch? No. So I'm guessing that's taken care of up here. I've actually never owned one of these. Uh, but they are great machines, uh, perfect for a homeowner, prosumer, uh, or you see, you know, professional landscapers using these. So without further ado, let's stop, uh, let's stop John and get to Pawn. Uh, I'm going to pop this stuff apart. Let's get to the carburetor. We'll just pop the bowl off and see how bad she looks. I suspect, though who knows, that that's going to be our whole issue. Or do you want to check spark first? I recently found this wood-handled screwdriver, and as a result, I've been using it as my spark tester because I can't accidentally shock myself, and boy, do I love that. Oh, yep, I saw a sparker. Yeah, she's got a spark. The spark is not the issue. Maybe that leaf is the issue. I actually found a couple wood-handled screwdrivers, and I've just been enjoying the heck out of them. I can't lie to you. Now, these uh, Briggs & Stratton Industrial 5 and 8 horsepowers are great little motor units. Uh, they're super well built and I've yet to find one that I can't persuade into going my way. Especially one that has compression and spark. <clears throat> Look at this thing. Yeah, this thing was well cared for. Usually these are covered in oil and it looks like they've got about uh, 32 years on them. So I am extremely confident. I think I think it's all rusty, dusty, and crusty from sitting outside. But uh, this this old dentist here did us a favor, and he was taking care of the old girl. So let's pop this little thing off. All right, let's see. Well, that bad boy don't look too bad. Is this a Nikki carb? I think this one's made by Nikki. They do the through bolts. I could be wrong. I'm not a Briggs and Stratton expert the way I am a self-proclaimed Tecumseh expert. Now, I don't have any carb rebuild parts for this in the shop, so. Oh gosh, and I really don't want to make this a multi-day project. I have so many projects sitting out there waiting for parts, waiting for friggin' a miracle. Hopefully, we can find something on the wall of shame to make this work. 
That is not a good sign. <laughs> you see what that looks like? That means that's what the inside of the carb looks like. Good gravy. Oh, but I have that other motor. That's got a good carb on it. I think that's got like a cleaned carb on it. So let's see. Nope. Oh, gosh, she blows. Which is kind of a bummer because I wanted to be able to show you what the inside looked like, but there's still plenty of carnage to see. All right, never mind. Take the carb off. And this will be the first time on this channel I'm using my new ultrasonic cleaner. All right, friends, here's what we're up against. Carburetor's pretty bad. Pretty rusty. Bowl, disgusting, but no problem. This is a function of that ethanol gas. It breaks down, turns into water, and if you have a bowl full of water, what's it gonna do? It's gonna rust. So we can get that clean. That's not gonna be a problem. Uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to save this rubber seal. I'm almost certain I'm not this bowl gasket, so whatever. Still gonna put it aside. And let's see. The good news is it doesn't seem like anything inside the carburetor is seized. Like this pin doesn't seem to be, now nah, the pin's moving freely. That's usually where your issue is, that pin seizes. Ta-da. Let's take bets. You think the needle's gonna be all right? Oh, actually the needle doesn't look bad. A little rusty, a little, uh... no it's not, Never mind. that's just a rubber tip needle. So yeah, uh, maybe we can save this after all. Maybe, probably not. But maybe. Yeah, so with that being a rubber needle, the seat is solid, so we don't have to worry about ruining that with brake clean. We're actually breaking up. Look at this. You see this? This is what I'm about to dump out. <clears throat> this is all crust that I just broke up off that main jet. See that? So, I mean, there's no wonder this thing didn't run. Um, now, can I get that main jet out of there? <laughs> LOL. Ooh. Take your bets, what should I use? WD-40, penetrating oil? What's y'all favorite? I don't know, I go back and forth. I used to have a preference. I don't think it really matters all that much. I don't think penetrating oil does nearly as much as we want to believe it does. It's just one man's assessment. I don't know if this carb is savable. We're gonna get it as clean as possible. We're gonna toss it in the ultrasonic cleaner. I just wanna see if I can get that jet out of there without destroying it. It's weird because some parts of this carb are like perfect and other ones are just KO'd. So let's see, this, this um, should be your pilot jet. Oh, and that one seems like it's gonna come out of there fine. Non-adjustable, of course. Down the old throat hole there looks pretty good. It's so weird. So yeah, this is clearly just not a, really a neglect situation as much as um, they let the that crappy ethanol gas sitting there over a winter, you know? You only get one shot with these um, brass jets. All right, I think we're getting it. If you hear that noise in the background, that's just the uh, ultrasonic cleaner heating up. Yeah, I think this thing's coming. It's not. In great shape, though, I don't mind telling you. And there we go. Whatever is left of this poor, neglected, beat up jet. Tell you what, bud, we barely got that one out of there. That emulsion tube. I guess that's what that is. Is that a jet or an emulsion tube, technically? Look at that. 
how chowdered up that is. I don't feel good about it, but it was either that or just leave it in there. All right, we're still waiting on the ultrasonic cleaner to come up to temp. Let's see about hitting uh, this bowl nut. I can't tell if there's an opening on the tip of it or not, but I don't know. Let's hit it on this wire wheel, see what happens. there's anything functional about this outside of just being the bolt that holds the bowl on so all right friends here is the ultrasonic cleaner we're going to be using on the channel from now on it goes up to 80 celsius which i think is 140 degrees uh i just wanted to get it preheated get the chill out of it i don't know what's 30 degrees celsius 32 uh is that like 90 degrees yeah it's like 90 degrees anyway it's got like a half hour timer on her so we're gonna throw our little bitty bits in here so as we don't lose them i'm gonna do that bolt anyway let that guy sit there uh bowl i went back and forth on whether or not i wanted to try to clean this a bit beforehand strictly for the sake of academics let's see what happens with it put our little emulsion i don't know if this is an emulsion tube or a jet uh whatever it is it's totally dickered <laughs> from me trying to get it out of there. This guy, again, looking pretty good down the throat hole. It's just the rusty, crusty, dusties on the outside. Uh, we're gonna give her a half hour on as hot as she wants to go. And uh, that'll be that. I will leave a link to the video where I introduced this on my main channel if you're interested in that. We did some tests and I explained why I went with what unit. Uh, 15 minutes is probably good enough. See you guys in 15 minutes. Who cool, buddy, you wanna see something gnarly? You guys know me, I can't resist putting a little spritz of the good stuff down the old throat hole, see if she don't wanna to bark to life. I did that and this is what I saw. For context, uh, this is your fuel send line. This is a little vacuum fuel pump because the uh, tank is all the way on the other side. Gravity would never get the job done. So uh, let's keep an eye right there. We'll give her a little spritz of the good stuff. A little tug and chug here. Well, first of all, could you see the, uh, well, first of all, she ran, so that's a beautiful thing. Could you see the stuff that was coming out of there? I don't know if you can tell, if you look at it on my floor, it's mostly water. Um, yeah. Not fuel, doesn't even smell like fuel. You can see it on the tire, it's beaten up. So whatever little bit of fuel is in there, it's mixed with a whole ton of water. So I'm actually gonna go and pull this over a couple more times, try to clear out that whole, oh, I need to drain the tank still, don't I? It's pulling that crappy fuel from the tank. Christmas, amateur hour. All right, let me drain the tank while the, uh, the swarm of locust machine is doing what it does. Uh, I'll drain all that fuel out. Uh, that confirms, we know what the problem is. Ethanol gas, she done went bad. Story old is time. Let's see, uh, we might have to go in for another 15 minutes. Oh, that certainly broke up all the rust and stuff nicely. I'll leave this one out, I can do that by hand. This carb body, there's a fair amount of rusty, crusty, dusty stuff on there still. Let's see how these little guys look. Yeah, these are fine, all right. Alrighty, so I've thrown the carb body and that emulsion tube back in there. I have the bowl and uh, the little bits and bobs right here. They're plenty clean. I'm gonna put the top back on this bad boy, let her run down for another 15 minutes. Uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna clean this bowl, drain the tank out of that, drain the tank out of that gas. Amateur hour, I'm gonna drain the gas out of that tank. Uh, and then by the time this is ready, we should be ready to put her all back together and see if she won't chooch to life. I am extremely confident. 
All right, friends, I do apologize for the continued background noise, but got to get work done while the uh, thing is going. This carburetor bowl is way dirtier than, geez, maybe anyone I've ever seen before. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to use this uh, round <clears throat> wire brush on this drill. It's way too aggressive for this application. Can you see, though? I mean, the chunks of rust. I looked at the bowl that I have on the spare motor over there, and I'm not sure it's the same, because that's a five horsepower. So we'll try to save this one, and if not, we'll see if that one will work. Uh, but underneath the rust, there appears to be good metal. So, I don't know. Let's see, without further ado. Well, friends, that is far from as good as it should be for this application. But, I don't know, we're going to give her a shot. Here's the long and the short of it. The first time this comes in any contact with water, we're going to be in the exact same boat. Until then, though, it's probably clean enough to get the job done. So, I'm going to uh, spritz it out with some of the good stuff, hit it down with the finer wire brush here, and we're going to give this one a shot. Uh, and I'm gonna keep my eye out for a uh, side of the road motor that's got you know the same bowl and uh, we'll replace it when we can but I suspect we'll get a run in today with this guy as is. Uh, Alrighty so I was cleaning out the fuel tank and the old fuel out and any junk in the bottom and I noticed that this petcock was moving fluid kind of slow. I'm not sure if it's sludged up or what but we're gonna put it into the open position and we're going to dump it. I don't really see anything coming out of there. We're going to dump it in the um, ultrasonic cleaner for the last 10 minutes. Because uh, why not? All right, friends. There it is. That's the game. No more swarm of angry wasps in the shop. It's the only thing I hate about this thing is the, the noise, 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 noise. Turn me into the Grinch over here. Let's see what we've got. First and foremost, let's wipe this guy down. And we'll put him aside. He was all caked in all types of mean, nasty, ugly things, but I'm sure that heat bath did good. Somebody tell me it's steaming, so I know it's pretty warm. 46 dungarees Chelsea. Let's blow this thing out, what do you say? 46 dungarees Chelsea. What is that in American temperatures? Someone will tell me. Perfect. Now on to the main event. Well, okay, let's get the emotion tube out of here. That's a good sign. Pretty confident that guy's all cleaned up now. I think our best course of action, I mean, it does a good job taking the grime off and it does a reasonable job taking the rust off. Though don't get me wrong. All right, now what I was saying was, uh, I recognize that the purpose of an ultrasonic cleaner is not to remove rust. I was just commenting that it does do a reasonable job. I don't know where my brass brush is. You really shouldn't use a steel brush on an aluminum carb body, but meh. Scrub the crustier bits off, then we're gonna blow compressed air through all of the holes there. 
pretend like our old bowl gasket is not going to leak worse than the Iraqi Navy. And uh, see if we can get this old machine to chooch to life. I mean, she was she was banging away on the uh, little spritz of the good stuff I gave her, so I'm pretty confident that if we can get this carb figured out, should be in for luck. Let's see now. You don't just want to blow air into all of the holes. You want to pay attention to where that hole comes out and make sure the air goes through all the way. So like this main jet, you want to make sure it's blasting off. Oh yeah, sure it is. Might have even got you guys square in the face. Um, yep. Yep. Make sure you get your pilot circuit. And then the internals. Alrighty, that's not too bad, all things considering. Now I'm pretty sure on the older style carbs, this was an adjustment screw for the pilot jet maybe, but on here, it's not. In fact, I think that five horsepower I have over in the corner has an adjustable carb, which means the bottom bowl nut is adjustable, and either this one up here is adjustable, though I don't think so. I think it's down here on these old Briggs. I cannot overstate the value of a quality screwdriver. I love these little Harbor Freight jams that I got. It was probably nine bucks for a set of eight of them. You really can't beat that. The difference is I got this uh, super long Klein one. It's actually for tuning snowblower carburetors. Um, this one screwdriver, uh, 12 bucks maybe? Uh, but it, the tip is hardened and the way it bites into stuff in a good way uh, is just unmatched. For getting this, this uh, jet out, I don't know that I could have done it without this screwdriver. And I'm gonna do the same for putting it in. It's gonna bite into the brass that's left as opposed to wanting to skip and chip away more of it. I don't know if this carb's gonna work, I don't, but that's what this channel's about. Anybody can go on Slamazon, buy a cheap knockoff carb, right? The, the Chinese ones, I mean, shoot, I've done it. What am I babbling about? I've definitely done that. But for something like this that I'm gonna hold on to myself, screw it, let's see, I, I think I forgot to show you. This is how clean I was able to get the bowl. I already intimated to you that I recognize the fact that if that thing comes in contact with water in about 10 minutes it's going to rust up and we're going to be right back where we started. But there shouldn't be any water in your carburetor. Ideally it's an aqua free zone. So this might get us through. I suspect the good doctor was not using stable in his gasoline. Just a hunch which we will be doing, obviously. Now this is really just, it's not an adjustment screw. So I guess it's just a plug so that you can blow out this pilot circuit if you ha if ins you had to. I guess that's what the story there is. Because there's definitely no adjustment to be made there. All right, friends, we have two problems now. I don't know what that goes to. Uh, this is our bowl gasket. It looks like it was sitting next to the Edmund Fitzgerald for a few years. Here is our fiber gasket. It also looks like it sat next to the Edmund Fitzgerald, but it's on top of that is broken. So, let's see what we have in here. Now, the majority of the stuff in this box is for snow blowers and weed whackers. This is neither of those things. We have Briggs, no, not Briggs. We have Tecumseh fiber gaskets, which looks like they might fit. It's gonna be better than nothing anyway. It's gonna be better than that broken one. For the bowl gasket though, oh, I've got these. Certainly have to try to stretch it. Let's give it a shot. What say you? We can use a Tecumseh bowl gasket, Tecumseh fiber gasket, on our Briggs and Stratton. What will they think of next? All right, 
first things first, fiber gasket. If you are wondering, I know for a fact you're not, here's the part number on the fiber gaskets. These are direct swaps, so if you're rebuilding snow blowers all winter like I am, uh, go on Amazon, get 20, 30, 80 of them, and just be done with it. Because there's nothing worse than trying to put one of these on one that either you're going to use, you're going to try to sell, or it was a repair job, you look like a jabroni. So, yeah, that actually is going to fit good enough. There's a little bit of uh, weeble wobble in the, in the room there. But... And bowl gasket, right? This one's a little bit of a taller order. But we'll give her a shot. I mean, certainly this one was going to leak. Uh, I will tell you, though, what I've been doing with these recently, clean them off the best you can, nice and gentle with some soap and water, and then douse them in WD-40. It brings them back a little bit. If they're really bad, instead of dousing them in WD-40, you rub them down with RTV. Is that the right way to do it? No. Is it even remotely an okay way to do it? Eh, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, that feels like it's sealing. It's not metal on metal. That's touching the rubber, so that, that just might work. Crazier things have certainly happened. This needle still got a little bit of rustiness on top, but I might just leave it because I don't want to break it. Yeah, I'm going to leave it. And slide this in there. Slide this in there. That's one thing I do like about Briggs and Stratton. I like, give me a needle that's got rubber on it and give me a brass seat so I don't have to change the seat all the time. I like it, I know others don't. Um, emulsion tube is in, the mangled mess of a, an emulsion tube. This thing is on. All right, well, the fiber gasket is lined up. There's no spaces, so that should work. Oh, this is a Walbro carb. I didn't know that. Walbro makes good stuff. Hmm. Um, now the only thing that I'm really worried about now is the fact that this side gasket ripped and clearly there's some plumbing here that's important to something. God knows what or when. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this back on the machine. We're gonna put her all back together and we'll see if she chooses to life. If I run into any other issues, I'll bring you guys in. If not, we're just going to do the victory lap. We're going to go out and blow some leaves off the driveway. Alrighty, carburetor is on, fuel tank is on, plumbed. It's not hooked up to the carb yet. This is not pinching it off, it's just holding it down. I want to turn it over a few times to make sure fresh gas is pumping so that we're not going to immediately dump uh, some last little bit of water and sediment into our cleanly or freshly cleaned carb. I was going to try to catch all of whatever may or may not come out, but screw it. Who cares? Send it. Oh yeah, bud. Looks like some good fresh gas. You can usually see the water beating up on your hand. And that's not the case here. I'm sure you can't see that, but I can. All right, now there's a siphon going, so I'm gonna have to turn this off before it all drains out of the damn tank. Here we go. I'm sure that's really good for the 10 year old rubber on the tires. It's been doused in 93 octane. I can honestly say that this is a first, getting a cheap or free, I don't remember if this was free or cheap, but if I paid for it, I didn't pay more than 20 bucks. Uh, getting a unit like that, a non-running DOA unit and the air filter wasn't one of two things. Either it's brand new because uh, they were trying to diagnose the issue and it never worked, or usually what I find is uh, the exact opposite of that. It's been you know, neglected its entire life. It's covered in oil and grass clippings. So to get one that I can reuse, it's pretty nice. think it's the moment of truth the clock isn't it let's find the uh where did i put that choke oh shoot i never checked to make sure that choke was set up right thankfully i got lucky i believe this was our choke knob i'm gonna do something i never do i'm so confident i'm not even gonna bring the brake clean outside with me let's go all right friends we've got the throttle on on the handlebars i believe Yep, that's all the way up. I don't know which way is choke. 
because the uh, directions are rusted off, but that's okay. We'll try it like that. Oh, gotta turn the fuel back on. That's the kind of thing that'll get you. Man, does this thing pull over hard? I don't think that it's, uh, that anything is wrong. I think you're just, there's no clutch between the motor and the fan assembly here. So you're spinning that whole thing. Let me get myself a little more elbow room here. Let's see, which way is friggin' choke? noticed it as an on off switch that could have <laughs> that could have kept me hemmed up for a while all right come on baby none of that seems too good does it but man is this thing hard to turn over okay that's on that's on choke is doing whatever the choke is supposed to be doing Maybe just one spritz of the good stuff. I never did look at the spark plug because it had spark. I guess we could look at that real quick. Alrighty friends, I have no reason to believe that we don't have spark, but we never looked at this spark plug, so it seems like we ought to do that. I think it's just a function of it hasn't run in a while, and it's so darn difficult to turn it over. Because you're spinning that whole thing. That doesn't look too bad, actually. It looks relatively new. Still got the corners on there. I'm not even gonna bother gapping it because I'm confident. Let's see about getting spark here now. Oh, it's definitely sparking. She's a sparking. I know it's hard to see it on the old camera, but uh, trust me. Yep, there we go. <clears throat> and you can kind of tell you're getting some of that flywheel effect from the uh, the big rotating unit there, picking out some of the the bigger chunks from around the, um, you know, we're gonna put the spark plug back in. All right, this thing's sparking. I'm gonna do what I said I wasn't gonna do. It's just how I'm, it's just who I am. Just barely a hoot. There's barely even a hoot in there. All right, let's see, how are we looking? That's up, that's up. We're sparking, we've got fuel, let's do this thing. Let's light this candle, eh? tell you what this thing's been sitting in the to-do pile for months now and I just could not be happier that it is up and running um, let's do let's do a quick once around then we'll, then we'll shut this thing down so she's running bueno gotta love it yes it's dirty it's dusty it's rusty it's clearly was left outside but you can tell it wasn't kept outside in a salty environment it wasn't used to blow snow off a salty road or something so all this is just surface rust and stuff doesn't really matter. I'll probably tear this stuff apart at some point and oil, grease, whatever the stuff in there because inevitably it's pretty crusty. It's got a throttle up here that I'm honestly, no, it's definitely stock, but if you follow the line down, not attached to nothing. doesn't really bother me, I could care less. Um, I guess it would have acted on the same, yeah, the same lever that this acts on, so we've got this one clutch or a clutch choke run 
so I'll make a note of that. Other than that, man, she's in good shape. I'm not even going to change the oil again. The oil in there was brand new, remember? I have no idea how old it was, so, I mean, you know, I'll use it for a season and then I'll change it, but... Yeah, doesn't look milky, doesn't look oily, or oily Christmas. Doesn't look watery. I think we've done a good thing here. Oh, it's got the on-off switch. I wonder if that works. Let's try this one more time to see if the on-off switch works. My goodness, just die already. It's really holding on there. And again, that is the flywheel effect. Uh, you can't see in there. I'll do another video once I pull this off. I don't feel like doing it today, but uh, there's a huge metal rotating turbine assembly in there. Uh, it's got a good amount of gravity to her. This thing's a W. I really, I think I paid 20 bucks for it. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with these, you can determine, do you want to be pushing it in front of you or over to the side? And then you got your chute here. Uh, which you can actually dictate height and stuff. Let's just put it, stay camera. Can you see anything? Who knows? Put it like that. That seems good to me. Now let's go test it on the driveway. I'm not gonna dare, well, not that I'm not gonna dare, but I'm not gonna put air in these tires. Uh, I'm assuming they don't have tubes in them right now. We're gonna put tubes in them and those will be the tires for the future. That'll be another video if you want to see how you can save tubeless tires that are all cracked up like this. We'll do another video. Let's go test her on the driveway. driveway on the planet oh gosh i absolutely hate it my whole property is like that it's just on a 45 degree angle it makes mowing the lawn miserable it makes blowing the leaves miserable it makes trying to play soccer in the front yard with a kid miserable it also makes pushing this thing up the driveway miserable so maybe we got to figure out a uh, self propulsion system huh maybe we'll cannibalize one of our snar blowers it's not gonna happen oh uh, let's wrap this one up so the unit itself in great shape this eight horsepower motor in great shape, plenty of compression left. The rotating assembly for this thing in great shape. Oh, there are date things here. This is an 07 unit. Interesting. It was bought in Southampton, Pennsylvania from maybe Little Wonder is the name of the store. 1028 Street Road. Real clever name there, Southampton, Pennsylvania. So if you like the video, by all means like the video, that's just common sense. Subscribe to the channel, maybe even go check out my other channel, d and &E in the Garage. That's a channel where we um, work on Jeeps. We do automotive there. We do small engine here. Leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes if you have any uh, takes on what we did here today. Wouldn't mind hearing them if you own a little wonder. These are great units. I never owned one, but the reputation precedes them and it's a heck of a lot better than uh they're not cheap to buy new so if you see one of these up for cheap or even for free pick it up those brigs that they put them on are good motors chances are oh i'm out of breath still from pushing that thing up the hill uh chances are it's just an afternoon worth of work uh additionally obviously i just got the old uh angry locust machine to uh, make it completely impossible to hear what's going on in the garage. If you use one and you'd like to give me some tips, I'm all ears, because this is my first experience. Uh, and again, I linked up in the corner the video on d, &D in the garage where I un kind of unboxed, it's not really an unboxing, but I, I, you know, I tested it out and we dipped our toe in the water. So, little wonder, success. What do I have to do the rest of the day? Maybe I'll work on those jet skis. <laughs>
That's all there is to it. So as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.